What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build video, with today's build being a completely weird take than usual, and I wouldn't recommend you bring this in hardcore or sweaty type content, as it's really not designed for these environments, but it's a nice wacky build, suitable for all seasons and for those who like to add a bit of flair to their stasis. Now with the use of the behemoth class, glacier grenades, whispers and ruinous effigy, we are going to be bringing out our inner Kobe and slam dunking on everyone with some added on ice to it. This is a setup that I haven't seen anyone talk about or use at all, which is a little odd since Runa's effigy AoE and status in one creates a perfect freeze and shatter combo. And to be honest, it works really well when combined with the whispers for even more benefits. Now let me explain that this build is designed simply for messing around within low level PvE content and I would recommend you don't use it in anything higher or in PvP content like Trials, although normal PvP is fine if you can pull it off with a well placed team. So with further ado, let's get our meme on. Starting off with the subclass, we will be using the Behemoth Titan class with Cryo Slam and Tectonic Harvest aspect and Whispers of Shards, Fissures and Hedrons fragments. With the Aspect and Fragment combined, you'll be able to produce grenades at a moderate high rate, produce a bigger stasis explosion upon destroying them, and get a weapon buff upon destroying stasis thanks to the Whisper of Shards, Fissures, and Hedron's Fragments buff, and then the Cryostam Aspect will allow you to simply slide into them to destroy them. In this section, we need to focus on having our grenade region at a typically high level than normal, so we can spread the stasis effect and damage when we do our slam dunk move. With the destruction of our stasis via the Whispers of Shards and Whispers of Fissures and Runa's Effigy for effect, the damage done should be enough to shatter everything around you while also kicking in the effects. We can use this combo to pretty much meme everyone around us as long as we keep our grenades flowing and freezing everyone. It's also recommended to get this second aspect so you can expand on your fragments list which is important for this build but can be gotten away with if not available. This is what makes the build viable but also risky to use since you need to close a gap, get the needed FG ball and then dunk before they break free, or until your teammates come in and disrupt them. Don't worry as we can work around this. Now for your grenades I would recommend you use the glacial grenades to their fullest for the offensive and defensive role, however all the grenades can be used depending on which area you use them in, for example glaciers and dust fields are great for oncoming and grouped enemies with a bit of weight for them to kick in while ice snap grenades are great for PvP for the instant freeze and easier to pull off there and then. That's how I look at it, but you can change this to however you want it to fit your style. For the weapons, ideally you will need a weapon that has the demolitionist or the wellspin part to cover the grenade regen rate and the ruinous effigy exotic for the gram slam effect. You're also going to need a 7th seraph weapon for the grasp of Rasputin mod, so either the AR or 7th seraph revolver would be suitable. My primary will be the 7 Seraph hand cannon with multi kill clip and underdog, a very good hand cannon to use in PvE that I believe a number of people have slept on until now. The weapon as a whole can roll with some good perks, I would highly recommend you try and get a roll that has the damage buffing potential, as the weapon does not hit hard in PvE environments at all, and if you plan to use this in PvP, it's the exact same. I would also recommend you add in the minor spec mod if you have it for a 7.5% red bar damage buff which I should say the weapon really does need. Now as it's a 180, the weapon pretty much has no recoil to it, so your shots will always be very accurate, which is favourable in PvP environments. Except for the pros and cons with the weapon, I will also be using the weapon in conjunction to produce war my cells, and the idea is to get a cell made, and use it as a debuffer against bosses or regular tough adds, and with the damage buff being added, I can swiftly take out low level red bars within a boss area, and then go ahead, collect cell, chuck it near a boss for extra debuff thanks to the warmind protection mod, and then really just go from there. For our secondary, we will be using the Ruinous Effigy for the transmutation perk, and with this perk, we will be able to turn enemies into small orbs, and then mercilessly murder everyone else around us with it. There's not really much more you need to know with the weapon, as it's a simple design, point and transmute weapon, that pretty much does everything that you will need it to do. One thing to be aware of is that the moment you transmute your target, you have limited time to make full use of it before it goes, so be sure to have your grenades ready to do the dunk, and also be sure to use the shield effect it has built into it to close a gap if you're in a tight space. 
What I like to do against bosses when I get the chance is to use the shield effect to slow and damage said boss. And then once I hit about 5 to 3 rounds left, I then use my grenades and then dunk for a maximum amount of damage we can pull off in one go. This won't always be the case depending on the boss you face or enemy, but it's a viable formation to keep in mind. And lastly for the heavy, I've chosen to use the Fallen Guillotine Sword with Whirlwind Blade and Tireless Blade, and this will be used against bosses or tougher adds when the Wombo combo doesn't always work. This will mainly be used against champions or bosses who require more direct damage, and as swords this season have become the go-to weaponry for building up burst damage, the guillotine is the best one to use if you manage to get a god roll from last season. If by chance you don't want to use a sword, but still want to do respectable damage, I would recommend you give the grenade launchers or machine guns a go. Salvation's Grip is a great choice to use as its effect will work based off of the whispers we have equipped it, so you can keep your abilities going and procking on time, or you can use the 7 Seraph Saw with Warpal for a consistent damage phase as long as you have enough rounds available. I would recommend you use a sword though as the build will require you to close the gap at all times, and using anything else may be riskier to play with depending on activity level. You may as well go fully in with the build and not deviate too much with it, but if you don't want to use a sword or if you don't have the full long sword that I have then by all means go ahead and use something else which might be a bit more effective. For the stats, your main focus of the build is to build up your discipline stat as high as possible, as you won't be using Demolition's perk this time round, unless you have a weapon available in your heavy slot that can get the perk. I'm currently rocking a 90 in my discipline for a 37 second cooldown rate, which I found is the perfect amount of cooldown to get your grenades back very quickly, without the outside help of perks being involved. To speed this area up even more, we will be using the Whispers of Shards Fragments for a grenade boost upon destroying our stasis. So by the time we use our one grenade and destroy a stasis shard, we will regain a full grenade back then then. This is the method we will be relying on and you may want to adjust this to your liking, such as 80 for a 41 second cooldown, which I would say is also a good spot to aim for as well. Once your discipline has been adjusted to the correct level, you can then edit the rest of your stats to your liking, and there's only one area you must adjust. Recovery and resilience to be at 50 for the extra damage resistance and anything else left over should be invested into your intellect. Um, that's kind of my thought process from there, but you may want to adjust this to your own liking. Next for the armor, the main affinity you're gonna need is the Void for the War Mine Cells and Solar for the Charge with Light and Firepower mods. This should be fairly simple to achieve, but gathering the War Mine Cell mods may be an issue for some, but good news is that you don't need to have this area filled in generally at all, as the majority of the focus on the build will come from the subclass and abilities and weapons, and not so much from the mods this time round. This means you can slot in whatever you like or not until you get the required items. Exotics being used will be the armamentarium for the double grenades and any affinity is fine to have for it. Now as we cover the main topics and main points that we need to get across, the mods that will be making up for the build is as followed. For the head, we have Discipline and Power Rasputin mod. Arm, we have Recovery, Bolster and Detonation, Unstoppable Hand Cannon, and Grasp of War Mine mod. Chest, we have Maya Discipline, Concussive Dampener Times 2, and Take a Charge mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Insulation, and War Mine Protection mod. Mark, we have Discipline, Distribution, and Fire Power mod. So, like many mean builds you've probably come across or created, these type of builds mainly work in selected content and aren't to be taken seriously as you're not going to be breaking huge numbers or becoming a PvP god overnight. The interest of the build is how the Runa's effigy and Throws mechanic work hand in hand for a large but courteous final blow on anyone within the radius of it. This simple freeze and then turn your enemies into an orb that you slam dunk onto a group of unexpected enemies make a perfect shatter based build for those that don't want to rely on the already crafted shatter mechanics that are already in game, which sounds weird at first, but plausible when you think about how both the titans and the warlocks don't really have a great utility option for shattering, while hunters do. Hunters have the shatter dive ability which they can use whenever, and isn't great on its own, but when tied into frozen targets, it can create an epic add clearing option when built and spec on properly. Titans also have their charge melee option which provides both shatter and mobility, however, has terrible tracking built into it, which you can easily miss a target on and the moment you use it, you lose your charge melee until you get another one. 
and then the warlocks don't have a shatter method available or generally at all so they have to rely on other methods available as both titans and warlocks don't have much of a shatter method this build here provides an option for those players with a ease of use and access and one cooldown rate to worry about rather than multiple plus using the weapon alone is more than enough to do a hefty amount of damage on the stay side of things, I've added the Warmind Cells, Glasswell of Rasputin, and Power of Rasputin, and the Warmind Protection, so I could pick up my cells and drop them in areas of interest to gain a damage buff, and reduce inflicted damage upon myself from all enemies around them. I'm also using the Glasswell of Rasputin mod so I can pick it up and chuck said cells on the target, which will stick onto them and keep it to a basketball-ish theme. So now you have an option to shatter with any class in the game, with a surprising effect. But the downside of the build is that firstly, if you don't have the Runus Effigy, then you can't really do the build like shown, as there's no other weapon in game that is similar to what the Exotic does. This leaves you open to choose something else, but it won't have the same feel that is being offered. Secondly, you'll be without a strong backup weapon for close call fighting when you can't use your current weapons. And although the Runus Effigy is considered a strong backup weapon when you use the Transmutation perk, you'll firstly need to kill a target to activate it. And this will be an issue if you're facing a high level enemy, as the exotic isn't great for whittling down enemies' health. Your only option would be to switch out your primary for a shotgun instead, but you'll lose your options of warmind cells depending on how much you use them, which you may or may not wholly affect the build at all. Overall, the build is a great alternative for freeze and shatter builds that are currently in game, but instead of relying on a new subclass shatter method, we can create our own one with a much greater and wider range of damage coming from it. Like I said before, you won't get far with it in endgame content as it's too risky for close world fights, but in more casual and serial engagements, this build shines. So if you've been looking for a build like this for a while, then give this one a try and see how it matches for you, as the build is great for dishing out large hit and run tactics in PvE, and it's also great to use in PvP when you really just want to meme on others. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content, if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.